So in the last video, we analyzed the T-coil circuit, and we found out that the T-coil, if you cancel two of the zeros with two of the poles, uh, it can be represented by a simple second order transfer function, which is just one over one plus two zeta over omega naught s plus s squared over omega naught. And we found that omega naught was just equal to, in terms of k, uh, 2 over rd times cl over 1 times 1 plus k over 1 minus k. And we drew these k's in green uh, to distinguish what we have control over uh, and what we do not. And then zeta was just equal to 1 half times the square root of 1 minus k over 1 plus k. And I said previously that typically uh, we define a certain zeta uh, for the circuit that we want. So we, I talked briefly about maximum flatness. So we know that the frequency response of a circuit, uh, of a second order circuit, depending on your zeta will look different. So for a zeta equal to uh, one over square root of two, it's what's called maximally flat. So there's no, there's no peaking in the frequency response. So this is zeta equals one over square root of two. Uh, similarly, if we have a zeta that's less than one over square root of two, then we're gonna have a little bit of peaking in the frequency response. So zeta less than one over square root of two. And if we have a really small zeta, let's say zeta much less than one over square root of two, then we're going to have a very large peak. And as zeta approaches zero, this peak becomes infinitely tall. Now, what if we have a zeta greater than one over square root of two? Well, we have a curve that looks like this. So asymptotically, it'll be the same, but it starts to fall off sooner. So zeta is greater than one over square root of two. And from a frequency design perspective, we don't want this. We want as much bandwidth as possible. And we typically define the bandwidth as the point uh, at which the circuit gets to its minus three dB gain. Uh, if this is zero dB from where we're, where we're starting originally. Uh, let me just fix that line so it looks prettier. So typically we want to design for maximum bandwidth and this corresponds to a zeta of one over square root of two. So if we're designing our circuit in terms of zeta, then we can rewrite these equations once more. Um, and, or rather we can rewrite the equations in terms of K. So if we solve the zeta equation for K, we see that K is four zeta squared minus one over four zeta squared plus one. And remember from the last video that k was the only thing that we had control over. So once we picked our k, we knew what cb had to be, we knew what l had to be, and our whole circuit was finished. And that's great uh, because this basically lets us define a certain zeta. So depending on the characteristics we want, either maximum bandwidth or certain time domain characteristics, then we choose our zeta and we have a certain value for k. So we can actually redraw this uh, equation a little bit uh, to say that zeta is now in fact the variable that we have control over. So we no longer have control over k. We've decided that zeta is the variable that we want to design things in terms of. And then we can rewrite our equations. Uh, that's our value for k. And we can find a value for cb so CB is just CL over 16 times zeta squared. And these are just uh, rearranged versions of the, the previous equations. And L is just equal to RD squared times CL over four times one plus one over four zeta squared. And let me just draw this zeta in green to make it absolutely clear, four zeta squared. So once we have our zeta, we know what our CB has to be, we know what our K has to be, and we know 
all the properties of our circuit. And just so that we can, uh, just so that we remember what these, uh, what these values actually correspond to, this was our original circuit. So this is our load capacitor, and uh, I seem to have forgotten that we have a drain resistor, RD. We've got a bridging capacitor, CB, and our amplifier is just a simple common source. And that's great. So we're essentially done, uh, done with this circuit. So once we determine a certain zeta, uh, we know what L has to be, we know what we know what CB has to be. Uh, CL, we generally don't get to choose. That's generally determined by the next stage of our amplifier. RD, we don't get to choose because it's that will be given by our required DC gain. So we're done. Um, so let's just do a simple example. Let's say that we do want maximum bandwidth. So let's say zeta, we want to be equal to one over square root of two. Well, what values of uh, K, C, B, and L do we get? Well, let's assume that R, D is one kilo ohm and C, L is one picofarad. Then first we'll solve for K. So K is just four zeta squared, which is one half because one over root two squared is one over two, uh, minus one over four times one half plus one. So that's just two minus one over two plus one, which is one third. So we know that our magnetic coupling constant between the two inductors has to be one third. And that's pretty reasonable even for a realistic circuit. So that's good. Uh, that means that we can actually implement this. Okay, so what about uh, what about CB? What about our bridging capacitor? Well, it's just equal to one picofarad divided by 16 times zeta squared, which as recall is just one half. Uh, so that's one picofarad divided by eight, or 125 femtofarads. And that's also a reasonable value, uh, because we can build capacitors uh, of that value on integrated circuits. Uh, now, what about L? Um, so L is just RD squared, which is one kilo ohm squared, times CL, which is one picofarad, divided by four, uh, multiplied by one plus times one plus one over four zeta squared, which is one over four times one half or one over two. So, and that is just, well, one, if we do kilo ohm cancels picofarad, microfarad. So um, that would be one micro Henry divided by four times three halves. Uh, two cancels with four to make two. So one, so three halves or 1.5, 1 1.5 1 micro Henry's. Now by integrated circuit standards, that's actually a really large inductor. So you would likely need to use off chip inductors if you were uh, designing a system like that. Now, lastly, we're curious what our omega naught is. So recall that omega naught, uh, just from our above equation, it's one over R times CL, RD times CL, or two over RD times CL, times one plus K over one minus K. Well, if we plug in the K corresponding to, uh, so K of one third, then it turns out that this is two root two of one over RD CL. In other words, this is two root two or about 2.8 times one over RD CL, where RD CL was our original circuit bandwidth. So we've increased the bandwidth by almost 2.8 times while maintaining a flat frequency response. And that's something that we can't get from one or two or even three, um, well, one or two inductors um, in any other circuit configuration. So that's, that's fantastic. And that's why the T-coil is so powerful and so, uh, so often used for circuits where you want to increase the bandwidth. So 
let's just recall what it is we did. So we decided that we wanted uh, the poll, the two poles to cancel the two zeros because we're not, uh, we don't hate ourselves and we want to be able, be able to deal with circuits that we can analyze. Um, from that, we recognized that we only had one degree of freedom left. So since we got to choose C, B, L, and the coupling factor K, uh, and we used up two of those degrees of freedom, we only had one variable left that we get to choose. And that variable originally was K. Uh, but we realized that generally we want to design circuits in terms of their either frequency response or their time domain specifications. And the shape of the frequency response is determined by zeta. So we decided that we wanted zeta to be our design variable. And from that, we got these three equations plus uh, a fourth one. Uh, omega naught is 2 over uh, R D times CL. Uh, 1 plus k over 1 minus k, which if we choose to write that in terms of zeta, it is 4 over rd cl zeta, or sorry, 4 zeta uh, over rd cl. So these are our four equations uh, that we we have when when all the dust settles and these are the equations that let us design a t coil circuit from a chosen specification zeta uh, and if you want you can rearrange these um, these equations in terms of some other specification like if you wanted to arrange re rearrange them in terms of omega naught uh, you could do that uh, but typically that's not done typically we're designing a circuit based on its zeta so that's that's the entire process for designing a, a T coil circuit. And uh, once we choose our value of zeta, everything else about the circuit is fixed because we our CL is typically known and our RD is typically also known. And this is how we design the circuit. So thanks.